I apologize in advance for how unhinged this video is about to be. Welcome back to Book Break. I'm going to spend this video talking to you about my love for the author Emily St. John Mandel and I'm going to convince you to read all six of her books because in this video I'm going to introduce you to something that I have named the multiverse of Emily St. John Mandel. So Emily St. John Mandel is the author of six seemingly unrelated novels and they really are six standalone novels, each absolutely brilliant. People ask us a lot which order you should read the books in, which one you should read first, and honestly, you could pick up any single one of these and love it. So they are standalones. Of course, it's not quite as simple as that because these books do have really, really clever connections between them. But I'm gonna start by just introducing you to each of the six books separately so you can decide which one you want to start with. Last Night in Montreal is her first book. This is about a young woman moving from city to city. She can't seem to settle in one place. And along the way, she is being pursued by a private detective for mysterious reasons. The Singer's Gun is about a man who has decided to leave his criminal past behind him and live a more honorable life until his past comes crashing up back to catch up with him and he is sucked into one last job. The Lola Quartet is about four high school musicians reuniting 10 years later after one of the members, who is now a disgraced journalist, has uncovered a clue about his high school girlfriend who went missing all those years before. Station Eleven is arguably the most famous of her novels. This is a pandemic novel that was written before COVID. It is about the Georgian flu, which wipes out 99.9% .9 of the population. But even more than being a pandemic novel, it is actually set 20 years after this catastrophic event. And it is about the humans who continue to survive and thrive and make art in this new world. The Glass Hotel is a really dreamlike novel. This is about the collision of two separate tragedies, a massive Ponzi scheme exploding in New York and a woman who goes missing from the deck of a container ship. And finally, her most recent novel, Sea of Tranquility, is a time travel novel. This is about different characters living hundreds of years apart who each catch a tiny glimpse of a world that isn't their own. And so 400 years into the future, a time traveler is sent back to investigate. So as I said, six brilliant standalone novels, but there is more to them than meets the eye because Emily St. John Mandel has left Easter eggs throughout these books, particularly the most recent ones. There are themes that you will recognize across all of her books, but there are even characters who pop up in multiple novels, sometimes living parallel versions of their lives. So I said people always ask what order to read the books in, and honestly, depending on the order that you read them, you'll pick up on different things. And if you want to go in on a totally blank slate and you want to discover the whole multiverse of Emily St. John Mandel for yourself, then feel free to stop the video here and just go straight in and pick up one of the books. But if you want a few little clues about what to look out for, I am going to break down the multiverse of madness for you and I am going to draw it all out on this handy whiteboard here. Let's just check that it does wipe off. I'm very nervous. Okay, we're safe. That's not in the center. Try not to get annoyed by that. So let's start with station 11. Remember I said how in this book, the world was devastated by the Georgian flu? Well, in The Glass Hotel, one of the characters muses on the fact that the Georgian flu seemed like it was going to be this devastating pandemic, but then it died out and the world moved on. So that positions us as living in an alternate universe at this point. Is this pen working at all? And that makes sense to the fact that two characters, Leon and Miranda, appear in the Glass Hotel and they don't seem to have gone through the same experiences that they went through in Station Eleven because they're different versions of themselves. Now let's look more closely at the Glass Hotel because this is not the only parallel timeline in it. In the book itself, different visions of the future are referenced for some of the characters. And these show up in other books. So for example, there is a character in the Glass Hotel, Jonathan Alcaitis, who runs this massive Ponzi scheme. That Ponzi scheme leads to certain consequences, I'm keeping this all spoiler free, it leads to certain consequences in the book. But we do get a glimpse of an alternate version of how that world could have gone, a different fate for Jonathan Alcaitis and his Ponzi scheme. All I will say is that in that kind of alternate vision, he is living in a hotel. Now, let's move to another book, Sea of Tranquility. 
In Sea of Tranquility, we meet a character who refers casually to Jonathan Archaitis living in a hotel. So all three of these books are in the same multiverse, but they're all parallel versions. That character, by the way, who references Jonathan is called Morella, and she is just one of the characters from The Glass Hotel who shows up in Sea of Tranquility. There's also Paul and Vincent, the main brother and sister in The Glass Hotel, who also get mentioned in Sea of Tranquility. So many connections here. Now while I'm here, let's go back to this guy who I mentioned, Jonathan Alkytis. We know that he shows up in The Glass Hotel, and also in Sea of Tranquility. But this is not the first time we've met him. Now we're going to go all the way back to the Lola Quartet. Jonathan Archaitis is briefly referenced as a news story in the Lola Quartet. So Emily St. John Mandel has been planning this for a while, ever since she wrote the Lola Quartet. This book also mentions a band called Baltica, who show up in The Glass Hotel, and it references Leon, the shipping executive, who shows up in Station Eleven, and the glass hotel. My pen is really running out, so I'm gonna go over this in black so you can see it. You see what's going on here? And now let's finish on the most meta one of all. Emily St. John Mandel herself features in one of the books. In Sea of Tranquility, one of the characters, Olive, is an author. An author who wrote a novel about a pandemic, which then became very famous when a few years later there was a real pandemic. Sound familiar? Emily St. John Mandel wrote Station Eleven a few years before there was a real pandemic. So Emily St. John Mandel is Olive in Sea of Tranquility. That also means that Station Eleven, the book, exists within the universe of Sea of Tranquility. And with that, I'm done. There are probably more connections that I've missed, so please do comment below if you have read these books and you have noticed any more little Easter eggs that I have not drawn onto my multiverse map here. I will also link here to some more videos we've got from the author Emily St. John Mandel herself, so you can hear more about her books and her writing in her own words. And I will see you back here on book break when I've got my breath back, so don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you then.